I'm glad you can join us today. My name is Chip Heisler. I'm the Senior Marketing Manager here at InLink. Uh, today we have a special guest and a, a special topic that uh, uh, is getting a lot of attention in the marketplace, both with, uh, within the industry and within InLink and our customers, and that is uh, Lanyon and how to uh, use uh, Lanyon and what it means for your properties. Uh, today we have uh, Ricky, and I just asked him how to pronounce it, <laughs> Castoldi. <laughs> there you go. He's the, he's, <laughs> there you go. He's the uh, Vice President uh, of Supplier Solutions at Lanyon, and uh, we're going to spend about uh, 30 minutes today going over, uh, giving you a Lanyon overview the top five or six things you need to focus on and look at in, in, when in considering uh, Lanyon. So uh, what we will be doing is uh, if we can save questions to the end of the session, uh, in your um, control panel with then go to the meeting, or I'm sorry, go to webinar on the right side, uh, you will notice a question uh, box Please feel free to uh, enter in any questions that you may have. At the same time, if you would like uh, to do a follow-up with your InLink account manager, uh, please uh, let us know that. Or um, after the, the webinar, you can call your account manager directly. And then if you have any questions for Ricky directly, uh, feel free to um, enter those questions uh, as well. So with that, Ricky, thank you very much, and uh, I'd like to uh, turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Chip. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining the call today. It's great to have the opportunity to speak with so many of you at the same time. What I want to do today is something which uh, we do periodically um, with our partners like InLink, which is just to provide you with an update on um, what the major initiatives are with Lanyon, uh, particularly as we come into the corporate transient RFP season, which seems to come earlier every year and will be upon us very soon. So I'm going to cover um, a variety of different topics today. Oops, there we go. I want to start by just to give you a little bit of background on Lanyon and how the company's evolved over the past few years, because a lot of you will be familiar with Lanyon. Um, we've been in business for a very long time, since 1984. In fact, historically, our focus has always been on providing what I refer to as operational support software for uh, hospitality companies like, like yourself. Those solutions were historically and primarily in the areas of content management, um, particularly as it relates to the global distribution systems. Um, we one of the first tools that we ever brought into the marketplace was the ability to, uh, was a database which would enable a hotel to enter all of its descriptive data in one place and have that automatically upload directly into each of, uh, of the GDSs. And that's a solution which InLink uses today. Um, that now is, uh, publishes beyond the GDSs and into a variety of online uh, or internet-based uh, travel agents as well. And secondly, tools in the area of, of RFP management, uh, which again you'll all be familiar with because it's something that InLink uses today. It's the software that you use to enable you to respond to, to all of the RFPs which you receive from our consortia and corporate partners. So historically that was always our focus. Over the past few years we've changed and moved away from being a provider of, if you like, reactive solutions which just help to, to make your um, operational processes more efficient into creating what we refer to as a global hospitality marketplace. Historically, our industry is quite disjointed when it comes to hotel sourcing um, in that corporations have traditionally used a variety of different tools to create and distribute their RFP. Some of them that you'll be familiar with would include Bidstalk, Lodging Logistics, RFP Express, uh, Uversa. Once those RFPs are created and distributed, they're then sent over to the hotel companies who use a different platform, typically Lanyon, to create um, their response and then email that back to the corporation. So looking at that process, Lanyon felt that that was a, uh, 
disjointed process with too many um, too many manual steps, too much emailing involved. So what, what we've done is we've created the first platform which brings together buyers and suppliers in a single marketplace. So now when a corporation creates and distributes its RFP, um, it's doing so in an increasing number of cases on the same platform which you use as hotels to respond to that RFP. We've done that primarily through acquisition. Uh, four years ago, we acquired RFP Express. In 2009, we acquired Direct Connections. We sunset both of those platforms and moved all of those corporate accounts onto the Lanyon platform. Last year, we acquired Uversa, which had another 120 or so major corporate accounts on its platform. We are in the process of sunsetting the Uversa platform as well. And we are on track to start the 2013 season, which will begin this summer, um, with more than 600 corporate accounts all sourcing, all creating and distributing their RFPs on the Lanyon platform. So this should bring major efficiencies to your RFP process um, whenever you're responding to an RFP from one of the 600, we're approaching 650 now, 650 corporate clients that initiate their RFP on Lanyon. We're the only company that, that bring buyers and suppliers together on the same, same tool. What that's done for us is given us a much greater insight into uh, buyer behavior and the, the issues that buyers have and, and opportunities for hotel companies and individual hotels to get closer to our network of corporate buyers. So we've, we've come up with um, this concept of six big ideas for 2012. This is really a series of questions. Uh, which we think that you as hoteliers and uh, which Inlink as a, as a hotel company uh, will be asking and and the answers to those questions which relate to a particular part of the Lanyon solution set. So the questions which we're going to cover today begin with a very basic one. How do I find new corporate clients? How is it that I can, or how can I quickly uh, and easily identify which corporations are active in my marketplace? Who's around the corner from me? Uh, who's, who's got an office within a couple of miles of me that needs hotel rooms. Having identified that, how do I then get their attention? Um, how can I persuade a corporation to consider a bid from my hotel? Next question is, having got the company to consider a bid from my hotel, how do I make sure that the bid which I submit is competitive? How can I see what the rest of the marketplace is doing uh, and know where I should pitch my own rates uh, and my own offering with my amenity inclusion to make myself as competitive as possible. What's the best way to send that offer? Well, this talks to the Lanyon RFP solution, which uh, you're all familiar with because you're all using today. Having submitted the offer and been accepted into the program, what happens next? Once I've actually won uh, admission to a program, how do I make sure that the rates which I load are, are accurate, and that's something which happens a lot less frequently than you might imagine. And finally, um, I've got my hotel into the program, I've got my rates loaded, they're visible in the GDS. How do I then make my hotel stand out to the people that are actually booking, uh, what actually want to book a hotel in my city? So say so each of these relates to a, a part of the Lanyon solution set. Um, I'm going to talk briefly about each one of them starts with uh, the question of how do I find new corporate clients and, uh, and this talks to our new proximity report. So this is a good example of where Lanyon can leverage the data that we hold about corporate buyers and the data that we hold about suppliers. Obviously what we know about you as, as hotels is we know where you are because one of the mandatory fields in Lanyon is your geocoding data. So we know exactly um, your longitude and latitude. We know where your hotel is located. One of the things that we know about corporate buyers is we know where their offices are because that's one of the pieces of data that they upload into Lanyon when they start using our, our platform because it gives them certain advantages with other parts of the product set that we make available to the buyer community. So one thing that we can do and what we've recently um, introduced is our proximity report. And what this does, this will show, in this example, this is showing for a particular Lanyon corporate account 
This is showing all of its office locations and all of the hotels which belong to this chain, which are within five miles of one of those locations. So what this does is this helps uh, somebody at, at uh, hotel company level to identify where there's opportunities to expand a relationship. So if I'm working as, as if I'm the national uh, a national account manager working and representing in link properties, one thing that I can do when I'm talking to Axo Nobo is say, okay, well you've sent your RFP to five of the in link properties, but did you know there are actually another ten in link properties which are within a five mile radius of one of your corporate offices? We can also turn this around and look at it slightly differently so that it's valuable to somebody who's working at the property level. So we can run this report and say, for my property specifically, show me all of the corporations on the landing platform which have an office within five miles of my hotel. So there are 650 corporations, um, and we can identify using this report which of those corporations have an office near your hotel. So what that does is that gives you, as, as the hotel director of sales, pretty much a target list. Um, of corporations that you can go after uh, and try and get them to consider your hotel. So that's a new report for this season. It's called the Proximity Report, and that answers that first question. Okay, there we go. Next question is how do you actually get their attention? Um, once you know who's in your marketplace and who you want to do business with, how do you get them to consider a bid from your property? And this relates to our market lead service. Now the market lead service has changed quite a lot in the past year or so. I know that some in-link hotels have used this in the past. Um, the results probably weren't that inspiring, uh, just based on how the market lead service worked previously. Historically, market leads was regarded by our buyers as, as something of a, an opportunity to get spammed. Um, the way market leads worked was if a hotel said, yes, I'll consider unsolicited bids, um, any hotel anywhere in the in the Lanyon database could send that corporation a bid. So corporations would find themselves getting bids from hotels in regions where they had no, no business and, and no need to ever travel to. So we made a change last year to the functionality um, in the market lead service, which enables the corporation to set a search radius. So basically, the way market leads works today is the corporation says, OK, I'm going to issue my market lead for, let's say, New York City. Um, I'm going to identify a, a target list of hotels that I want that bid to go to. But I'm also going to open this up so that I can receive unsolicited bids from any hotel which is within a five-mile radius of my office in New York City. That means that it enables the corporation then to get a much more targeted list of bids back. It helps the corporation demonstrate uh, internally that they're doing due diligence in their, in their hotel purchasing processes that they're not just going to the same five hotels every year and asking them from the rate. It, it helps them to benchmark all of the rates in the marketplace. This is particularly relevant in times like these where ADRs are going up um, because travel managers need to be able to explain to senior management, to their senior management, why rates have gone up or, or, or what they're doing to check whether there are better, more competitive rates available in the marketplace. So last year we had approximately 100 corporations using the market lead service, accepting unsolicited bids on the Lanyon platform. That's probably three times as many corporations that we've ever had use, use market leads before. We're also in the process, as I mentioned earlier, of migrating corporations off the Uversa platform onto the Lanyon platform. Uh, we're migrating about 120 corporations. Historically, all of those corporations on Uversa have also had unsolicited bids open. They have the Uversa volunteer bid service. So as we migrate those corporations onto the Lanyon platform, uh, we're opening up unsolicited bids for those corporations as well. So conservatively, we expect to see 150 to 180 corporations accepting unsolicited bids this year. The really big news from last season was that the global acceptance rate was almost 12%. And what that means is that any hotel which subscribed to the market lead service and was able to submit unsolicited bids to eight corporations statistically would be accepted into one additional corporate program. The rate associated with market leads is such that being accepted into one program will very easily cover the cost of participation. So market leads has been a, a real success story for us over the past 12 months. We expect participation to continue 
to grow for this season. Um, and I, I would recommend it to any of you, any hotels which are in, I would say, you know, a, a primary or, or secondary corporate market. And if any of you are interested to see a list of the corporations which did accept market leads in your city last season, I'm very happy to provide you with that list. You'll see my contact details at the end of this. So be, by all means, drop me an email and I'll, I'll send you a list and say this is who you could have submitted a bid to last year if you if you'd had the the market lead service and as i say we expect that that total community of uh, of corporations accepting market leads to go up this season okay so that answers the second question of how do you get somebody's attention um, assuming that you're successful in getting somebody's attention and they say yes you can submit a bid to me um, next question is what's the right offer how do you make sure that you're offering a competitive bid uh, and this is another example of Lanyon being able to leverage data that we hold for our corporate buyers uh, making and make it available to the advantage of hotels like yourselves. As the season starts, the corporations issue their RFPs. Uh, they start to receive responses. They start to see bid submissions. All of those are compiled within the Lanyon database. So very early on in in the RFP process, we see what rates are being submitted by what hotels in what marketplace. So we've now come up with a new report called Lanyon Property Insight Reports, which can make that information available to you on an aggregated basis uh, at property level. So we take a hotel, let's say this is our hotel here, the best place to stay in New York. We ask them to give us a list of their competitors. Who are the hotels around you? Um, that you're competing for corporate business with. Once we have that list, we disguise the names and we capture all of the rates that are submitted by our hotel and by the five uh, competitor properties in that marketplace and we provide an average of them. So we show this is the 2012 average weighted rate. This shows that my hotel is the average of all the rates it submitted during the RFP process was $341.99. My competitor hotels say I don't know which one is which but I can see that these are these are five photos which I've provided this is the average weighted rate that they submitted so I can see that the average for the marketplace including my property is $368 the average without my property is $374 the rate which I'm submitting is on average $32 or eight and a half percent lower than rates being submitted by my competitive set now obviously you don't submit the same bid to every company so we also take an average of the lowest three offers keep losing my mouse, there is the lowest three offers and an average of the highest three offers. And then we compare that with the average um, of what was submitted last season and we provide a percentage showing the rate change. So we can see that this hotel's rates have gone up 15%. Uh, the average is that the rates have gone up 10% in this marketplace. We want this to be a like-for-like -like comparison, so we also look at not just the rates but also the amenities um, which are included in that rate. So we can see how, what percentage of rates were submitted to include lowest rate, uh, lo sorry, last room availability, um, which have complimentary breakfast, which have high-speed internet access, etc. And then we'll also show fair market share determined by how many offers did my hotel receive compared to how many offers are being received through Lanyon for all of the competitors, uh, for all of my competitors in the marketplace. So this is showing me that I received 28 bids. Um, the total bids were 481. I'm only receiving 35% of my fair market share in this marketplace. So that's a property insight report. Uh, it's being launched again for this season. We will be sending out six reports over the course of the season to any hotel which subscribes. It will begin with uh, a summary of the 2011 season. We can provide you that at any time between now and the start of the 2013 season. And then we'll send you... Uh, another report in August, one in September, and another one each month through the end of the year, which will show you for the same five properties uh, this information of comparing your rates against uh, their rates and, and their offers. So obviously there's lots of, <coughs> excuse me, there's lots of benchmarking data available in the marketplace. This is different. Um, most benchmarking data comes out of the GDS. In order to report on rates, negotiated rates which are loaded in the GDS, obviously you have to be in the program to begin with. 
What's different about this is this is information that helps you get into the program to begin with. Nothing happens unless you're in the program. So we're providing you with very timely information here at the beginning of the, or before the season even starts, sorry, as the season begins into what the position of the marketplace is. Again, if anybody would like to see um, a sample of a property insight report, make uh, contact with me afterwards and, uh, and we can talk about that. Next question is how best to manage the offer. Um, well, this is something which you use already and, and something which you already have access to as a result of your relationship with Inlink. Um, the RFP publisher tool enables you to store and reuse data. That gives uh, an account manager a, a multi-property view so that he can see all of the hotels that have been invited by a particular corporation to respond to a bid and what the status of that bid is. It enables you to submit consortium travel management company bids. It enables Inlink to distribute its own RFPs. Uh, enables you as a property level to create local corporate accounts. Any RFP solution in the marketplace will, will make the claim to do all of those things. The key difference is this integration with the Lanyon corporate accounts. And this is somebody think, something that nobody else can really offer today. These are some of the companies that will be issuing their RFPs on Lanyon in 2013. We now have approximately 60% of the Fortune 100, 50% of the Fortune 500. Obviously, there's a lot of names on here that are household names and will be very familiar to you. The key benefits for you of having the corporations on the same platform that you're on is uh, ease of response. All of the accounts, when they're created, will be already available to you. If you're using a, a third-party tool or, or an in-house tool, if Microsoft sends you their RFP, then that Microsoft account has to be created in your RFP tool uh, and configured with all of the account dates, all of the documents, all of the mandatory fields pre-configured before you can submit a response. Because Microsoft creates that RFP on Lanyon and you're responding to it on Lanyon, all of that's already in place before you start. So all you've got to do basically is enter your bid and hit the send button. And then if the, comp if the company wants to work with you and wants to negotiate with you, any negotiations that take place also take place within the application. So you've got a full history there of all of the um, activity during the RFP season with that corporation. So this is what it looks like. Uh, you've got your hotel over here. You submit your content into a content database here. Uh, and then you can distribute an RFP to a consortia, a travel management company, or to a corporate travel manager. Everything that we've been looking at and what we've been speaking about relates to corporate, the corporate transient market segment, uh, this annual process whereby the company says, I'm sending people to New York City next year. Um, I want them to come and stay in your hotel. I want to offer, make your hotel available to them. Give me a rate that they can use throughout the year. For the average buyer on the Lanyon platform, that um, accounts for only 40% of their total hospitality spend. So although it's a significant volume of business and it, it's probably 98% still of the business which goes through Lanyon, it's only 40% of the corporation's total hospitality spent. They have another 40% which goes on meetings, and a further 20% which goes on one-off, time-bound, extended-stay projects. So what we've done is we've expanded the scope of our solution so that buyers can use Lanyon not just to source transient rates, but so that they can also source a rate for a meeting, or they can source a rate for an extended-stay project. Again, part of what you get through having your property or having a license to Lanyon, if you're visible to, these, to the companies that are sourcing this types of rate in all of these different parts of the Lanyon solution set. So in addition to those 650 corporations using Lanyon to source transient rates, you've also got companies like IBM and ADP and PricewaterhouseCooper who are using IBM to source project rates. IBM did almost, a, or they did roughly 230,000 room nights a month in 2011. This is for software engineers who are going into a particular location and staying there for five nights a week for three months to build a data center uh, and need a hotel because um, IBM don't have one in their program which is appropriate for where they're going, either because it's not in the center of a city um, or because the rate that's been made available isn't appropriate for um, a, a three-month stay. So this is a growing part of our business. <clears throat> You don't have to do anything 
in order to be considered for this type of business. You're already visible to uh, the companies that are using this tool. One thing that you might want to consider is we do have marketing services. We have enhanced listings that are available. You have a basic listing today, as I say, as part of your, your Lamian license. If you want to consider an enhanced package, that's something that we can talk about. That will give you a priority, a list, a priority sort order listing. It will give you the opportunity to display richer content, um, multiple photos, videos, virtual tours, the ability to display special offers to these buyers. And the same applies in our meetings. Um, channel. This was launched last year. We're starting to see some momentum now on the meeting side. Uh, we have these four companies that are active in the meetings channel and we have others coming online. So you will start to see more meetings RFPs coming through the Lanyon platform. We're up to about 50 RFPs per month now. And obviously meetings RFPs tend to be quite valuable, quite, quite sizable chunks of business. Again, you have a basic listing. You don't need to do anything different. But if you do want to consider an enhanced listing, then then we'd be very obviously very happy to give you a proposal for that. Next question is, what happens when I win? I've been invited to send a bid. I've submitted a bid. We've negotiated online through the landing platform, and my rate's been accepted. What I need to do now is make sure that I load my rates um, and that they're available in the GDS to be booked. That's often the starting point for a number of challenges. This is a, a survey carried out a few years ago by Carlson, a few years ago by Carlson Wagon Lee Travel. They audited seven hotels in Paris, which had a negotiated rate with um, one, one of their corporate customers. What they found was that a, a real discrepancy in the accuracy and the availability of, of rates that were loaded. Hotel D here is in pretty good shape. They, they returned the, right, the correct rate 84% of the time. They returned a higher rate 10% of the time and a lower rate 6% of the time. Hotel A um, returned a, the correct rate 11% of the time. They returned a higher rate 47% of the time. Evolution Hospitality did an audit of 200 hotels last year, and they found that 40% of corporate negotiated rates weren't visible on the GDS. So there was no opportunity for a buyer to book the rate which had been negotiated at that hotel on 40% of occasions. Lanyon has our own rate audit service, which is used, or it originally was used by corporations to audit hotels. The average failure rate after a first audit um, with our tool is 35%. So one third of the time, the correct rate is either not available, um, or sorry, the, the, there is neither no rate available or an incorrect rate is available. So our rate audit service, which say was originally used by buyers, is now also available to hotel companies uh, so that basically hotel companies can audit themselves and, and make sure that they get their rates correct before they get audited by the buyers. So this is a useful way uh, and a very efficient way of making sure that your, your rates are loaded accurately and, you're avail and, and you, that your rooms are available um, without going through a lot of manual pain in order to audit yourself in the global distribution systems. The way it works, we have a, we obviously know what the rate should be because that rate got negotiated through Lanyon, so we extract a file from the RFP database. We run that against what's showing in each GDS. Um, we do uh, test cells in the GDS. Those return the rates which are available. We, we compare the two, and we identify the discrepancies. The final question I want to cover, I'm going over a little bit, so I'll, I'll talk as fast as I can, um, is how do I stand out? Once I've been accepted into a program, I've, aud I've loaded my rate, I've audited myself, and, and my rate is accurate, how can I ensure that an actual traveling employee can find me and will book me? One of the things, one of the components of the Lanyon license is visibility in the Lanyon Hotel directory. Our corporate customers, when they sign up for Lanyon, one of the optional add-ons that they can take is the Lanyon Hotel directory. That's an electronic brochure of hotel content which a traveling employee can access on the corporate intranet to see all of the hotels in its preferred program in a particular city. So if I'm an IBM employee and I'm, I'm traveling to New York, I keep giving the example of New York, um, I can go into my hotel directory, I can do a search on New York, and I can see all of the hotels which are in my program 
which are available for me to book. There might be 20, 25 hotels in there. The hotel directory is used by more than 300 Lanyon corporate partners today. And between them, they generate a quarter of a million hotel searches every single month. So there's a huge volume of search traffic taking place within the hotel directory by a very targeted group of users, which are employees who are about to book a hotel room. Feedback that we get from both buyers and suppliers is that when an employee calls a travel agent, they generally know already what hotel they want to stay in. Travel agents have very little influence over the choice of hotel. They're basically used to book flights. Um, what the hotel directory does is it gives the employee some semblance of control over where they stay without uh, diluting or disrupting the, the corporate travel program because the employee can see all of the options available to it that are within uh, the scope of the travel program. The reason buyers and, and, and travelers like to use our tool is because of the content that we have available. It's not a booking tool, but it will hyperlink through to an online booking tool. Um, or it will contain, it will display information for how to complete a booking, which for many corporations is still call your travel management company. The difference between the hotel directory and an online booking tool is the quality of the content available. We have um, basically richer information about a hotel than you'll find in an online booking tool, because in the online booking tool, that content comes out of the GDS, whereas in Lanyon, it comes from the Lanyon database, and we have much more content available. So we show a lot of useful overview information. We show really detailed amenities and services. We show on a map um, the location of the corporate office, the location of the airports, and the location of all of the hotels which will service um, that office. And then, again, you don't have to do anything to be in the hotel directory other than be accepted into the program. And at that point, you will be automatically visible to a corporation whose directory you're in. But what you can do is you can look at an enhanced listing, um, which will give you the opportunity to display richer content. So rather than displaying just one photo, if you have a relationship with VFM Leonardo, as I'm sure many of you do today, then you can display multiple photos, you can display virtual tours, you can stream videos. And again, you can um, show, um, promote, you can, do, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought, you can display promotional opportunities. So if you've got, um, if you want to offer a discounted rate, or if you want to offer uh, an, an amenity uh, which isn't built into the RFP, such as, for example, free shuttle transfer, that's something that you can communicate very effectively within the hotel directory to a, a, a large and, and growing number of, of, of targeted uh, buyers. So again, if you're interested to know which directories your hotel is in today, uh, and you want to consider an enhanced package so that you can target those buyers more effectively, then I'm very happy to share that information with you. So just to wrap this up, because I've run over by a few minutes, apologies for that, um, we're up to 650 global buyers now. Between them, they are generating about 350,000 RFPs through Lanyon uh, this year. That equates to $20 billion in annual spend, uh, which equates to 140 million room nights across not just the transient segment, but increasingly the meeting segment and also the project segment. So there's lots of opportunities beyond the basic license which you have with Lanyon today to actually get closer to this large and growing network of corporate buyers. Those are my contact details. So please feel free to get in touch or get in touch within link um, if, you, if you'd like to know more information. Chip, that covers it for me. Thank you very much all for your time. I look forward to taking any questions that you have now. Great. Thank you, Thank you, uh, Ricky. It was very informative, and I learned a lot, I know. So at that, at that point, uh, I'm going to open it up for questions. Uh, if you do have a question, uh, please uh, type it into the, uh, uh, the question box within go to, go to webinar. Uh, Ricky, one question here and online is um, um, 
says uh, hotels must subscribe in the property insight report and is that additional cost yeah that's an optional service it, it does come with an additional license fee associated with it okay and then um, will I be able to see Lanyon's platform on my MacBook Pro so is this a is this a Mac application or a PC application or can they view it? Is it a browser so it doesn't matter what platform or you know nobody's ever asked me that before. Honestly, I don't believe it's been certified. Um, so I I'm not I don't think so. Okay. Um, Michael, we could uh, get get back with you um, on that. Michael, uh, Michael asked that question. Yeah, I'm okay. just checking with the product person who's sitting across the room from me, and she's saying it hasn't been certified. Okay. We have uh, we have certain people who test it using a Mac, so uh, it may be that it. Uh, well, I'm going to leave my answer. It hasn't been certified. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's I'm going good. to speculate. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, any other uh, questions? Okay. Well, I tell you what. It looks like there's just those uh, a few few questions there. Uh, Again, I want to thank uh, Ricky for joining us today. And if you do have any more questions, you can follow up directly with your account manager here at Tinlink or with, uh, with Ricky at his, with his contact information there. Uh, going forward with our in forums, if you have any suggestions or topics or speakers that you would like to see within our um, monthly webinars, please uh, send please your requests or suggestions to your account manager. We are looking for uh, new information. There's a lot of material, but we're looking to make sure it's something that's applicable to you. One of the things we are doing is wanting to get more industry information, more of our partners such as uh, Lanyon and Ricky here today to provide you useful uh, information to increase your revenue and understand what's going on in the marketplace. Uh, right now, we um, we're having to uh, we're putting together a schedule um, and doing a little shuffling. Right now, I do not have the topic for next month, and I apologize. Uh, we'll get that out to you sooner. Also, some of the changes. Instead of giving you a one week's notice, we're going to try to back that out to give you a two week um, notice uh, for for next month. But we would like to hear from you in regards to the type of topics and information you would like to see. Now, as with this and this seminar webinar today, um, it will be it's being recorded. It will be placed will be placed on our website first by the first of next week. So, if there's anybody that you think uh, could benefit from seeing this webinar, um, we will have it posted in our um, news section on inlink.com. Um, with that, uh, again, I appreciate. It. Thank you, Ricky. And if there's any more any more questions, I think we're good. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next month. Goodbye. Thanks a lot, Chip. Bye. Thank you, Ricky. Bye-bye.